Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. A recent story in The Blade was just two paragraphs long, but boy, did it speak volumes about the freedoms we take for granted in this country. A popular Polish author is facing a prison term of up to three years because he called his country's president a moron. Here's the backstory. After the American presidential election in November, and again in early January when the Electoral College victory of Joe Biden was certified, Polish President Andrzej Duda, a close ally of Donald Trump, was sharply critical of the process, echoing the baseless theme put forth by Mr. Trump that he was cheated out of his re-election. That prompted a backlash from Jakub Solczyk, a well-known author in Poland, who expressed his displeasure with his president by calling the man a moron on social media. You can imagine that didn't sit well with President Duda. Soon enough, the wheels of the Polish court system were set in motion, charges were filed, and, well, Mr. Solchik may soon be doing his writing from a jail cell. One can understand the president's dismay. Mr. Solchik is part of a new generation of Polish writers born in the early 1980s who, in their books, plays, and essays, comment on the life and culture of their country's changing society. It's not surprising they would occasionally be a thorn in their leader's side. Let us also acknowledge that Mr. Solchik's choice of epithets probably was ill-advised. The term moron, after all, is a clinical one that psychologists have used to define extremely low intelligence. Two other such terms are imbecile and idiot. All three have definitions rooted in science. Fact is, however, that the terms have become so popularized that the science behind them has become meaningless to most people. So in the strictest of terms, the president of Poland, we must assume, is neither a moron nor an idiot. But let's be real. Mr. Solchik did not mean that the president of Poland is the textbook definition of a moron. He meant that, in his opinion, the president behaved badly when he criticized the events in Washington that sealed Mr. Biden's election as America's 46th president. What he did was exactly what Americans do all the time. We call our elected leaders, our politicians, our business executives, these things every day. If we see a policy or hear a comment we don't agree with from a public figure we don't like, we say something like, man, that guy's an idiot. Frequently, we go all in and use terms even more offensive to polite society. And by the way, as an aside here, is there really such a thing as polite society? I've heard good people, including clergy, say these things. When we call someone an idiot in this country, most of us do so without giving a second thought to how that might sound to the loved ones of a person who technically is an idiot. For better or worse, that's what sets our democracy apart, isn't it? I prefer to live in a land where we tolerate the misuse of hurtful terms because to forbid them is not tolerable. I'm glad I can sound off about my president and not have to worry that a SWAT team may soon show up at the front door. Even we writers have freedom of speech. While former President Trump might have loved to send his harshest critics to prison based on his say-so, he didn't and he couldn't. We still have due process and it still matters. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.